Well, okay, here we are. Quiz, ah, <laughs> I just discovered a typing error. I typed on quiz one. This is quiz two. Uh, quiz two, we're going to use the annuity concept, um, constant payment. And that's what I told you in class was the most important. But there's also going to be some composite cash flows that we have to add in. So let's look at the first problem here in quiz two. And the first problem says, company is going to purchase a machine in four years. Okay, so this is going to be a sinking fund or capital recovery. Uh, the current cost of machines, 10,000. Fine, the company expects price on these machines to go up 5% per year. Uh, company will put the cash into bonds, but they only make 4% a year on the bonds. A typical sort of thing. All right, how much money will they need in four years? So the first thing we're going to have to do is take the 10,000, which is present value, and we're going to have to project it into the future, four years, so we know how much money we need. Then what we have to do is find out how much money the company needs to put aside each year. Well, the amount of money they're going to put aside each year, of course, is what earning 4% will add up to that future value. So it's a two-part and let's go down. I'm going to go down and I'm going to just try writing on here. Uh, the first part, this is just, this is problem one. Uh, I need to know the, on um, part A, I need to know the future value. So the future value is going to be, well, I have the 10,000, 10K, and I'm going to be projecting it ahead at 5% interest. So it's 1 plus 0.05 is the interest rate. And I'm going to go four years. And so if you just chug and plug on that, I got uh, uh, I got $12,155. And to two digits, uh, we would, I would just write that as 12K. Now, by the way, uh, it's in, so this, is, uh, this would be the answer, 12K. You have to put aside 12K. Uh, so you have that right future value. Now the part B is, well, okay, how much should they save, be saving each year? Well, this is the future value that we have to have. And so the future value, we have the annuity formula that equals how much they have to put aside each year times the quantity, one plus the interest rate. Well, they're making 4%, not 5%. So it's 0 0.04, 0.04. And they're going, going to be doing it for, again, uh, four years. So minus one divided by the interest rate, which is 0.04. That has to equal this 12K. Actually, in this uh, to uh, get the right answer, we should really do the 12,155. It's fine to round off to two digits on our final answer, but in the intermediate steps, we should probably carry the decimals out further. And so if you just plug and chug on that, this factor right here, what did I get? Is 4.25 is what this winds up being. So the amount they have to uh, put in there is uh, 2,000, 2,000. 800, let's see, $862 is what I got. Uh, just plugging and chugging. And so uh, that's, so we would round that off to uh, 2.9K to do digits. So that would be part B. They have to save 2.9 thousand a year. And if they set this much aside and they earn 4%, at the end of four, uh, four years, they should have $12,000 so they can buy the machine, which is really what we're trying to do. All right, let's look at number two here. Uh, part two, number question two here. Uh, let's see, number two, you bought a car. You can finance a car. It costs $32,000. You're gonna finance it for four years. The loan is going to be 9,000 down you know, we usually typically have to do something down. And we're going to be looking, by the way, at loans in more detail later on. But for now, 9000 down and the remainder at 10%. How much will you be paying? What is the annual pay rate for this? Well, let's think about that. Sometimes it helps to do a little cash flow 
uh, because it, it's not always completely clear what's going on here. So let's do a little cash flow here. Uh, write out the cash flow here. The cash flow here is, is uh, well, here's the line. And we start off, we pay 9,000. So it's minus 9K. Uh, boy, this is jumping around on me today. So it's minus 9K. And then we have whatever our payment is. I'm just going to write it as, as a lesser sum because I don't really know what it's going to be. But it's four. I know it's four years. I'm trying to find how much this A is over four years. But I know that all of this has to project back so that this amount plus this equals the 32000 purchase price. Another way to look at it, though, is how much does this actually have to equal? Well, this has to equal the amount I'm borrowing, which is 32000 minus what I paid. I'm really only borrowing twenty three. And so what I really need to say is, well, okay, the future value of what I'm going to have to have is the 32K minus the 9K I, I paid them immediately projected into the future. Now, it's projecting into the future at what rate? Well, the rate in the problem we said was they want 10%. All right, so that has to be 1 plus point uh, point one and we're going four years to the fourth and so the future value is uh, what did I get for the future value 33 uh, so the future value of this difference is thirty three thousand six hundred and seventy dollars by the way I'm only borrowing twenty three thousand but I'm going to pay him thirty three well, that's the way loans go. So the question, so that's, so now I know how much the future value has to be, and that has to equal again a times one plus point one. That's one plus the interest rate to the fourth power minus one divided by the interest rate, which is is point one. And so if I solve for this and invert, I get that, well, I am going to be paying uh, $7,255 is what I'm going to be paying uh, on this uh, every year. Or uh, we'd write it in two digits. We'd write it 7.2K. So that's that's what the answer is here. I need to write. I need to have 7.2k. Well, the last question: You want a prize of fifty thousand uh, dollars? They're going to give you eighty-eight thousand a year for five years, and at the end of the year six, they'll give you ten. But you want your money now, okay? Someone's willing to buy it from you, but the person who buys it wants to make ten percent interest. How much should they pay you? Well, how much should they? I think I'll work that one right here. Let's just work it right here. Uh, well, no, I should keep them in order, I guess. I'll go down here again. All right. Problem you can see, I'm running out of room on this second sheet of paper. So I, I really should have yet another sheet of paper, and I don't have my cursor here. Let me see if I can get my cursor back here a minute. Uh, and no, I can't get my cursor back because now I'm stuck in the pen mode. Well, that's all right. Uh, so let us look at the cash flow here. What's cash flow going to be? Well, year ten, I'm a, year six, I'm going to get six. Year five, I'm going to get eight. Year four, I'm going to get eight. Year three, I'm going to get eight. Year two, I'm going to get eight. Year one. I'm going to get eight. So what I've got here is I've got an annuity. This part here is an annuity of six years at 8,000 plus I've got a 2K final payment. So if I want uh, to get 10%, what I have to do is I take this 2K and I project it back to the current at 10%. And I take the value of this annuity, the future value of this annuity, and project that back. So I have two pieces. Well, so that means that my present value 
is going to equal. Well, first let's do what's a future value of this. It's going to be 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.1, 10%. But now it's to the 6th power, minus 1, divided by 0 0.1. So that's this annuity's value here in year six. But I want to know what it is in the present. So then I have to project it back. And the guy wants 10%. So that means I have one plus plus point one to the minus six power, because I'm projecting it back. So that's this piece. That's the annuity piece. Then I also have to account for this extra 2,000 out here. So that's plus 2,000, 2K, times 1 plus 0.1 to the minus sixth. So that's projecting this last piece back. And I got, when I added that together, I got um, 3,000, 35,971 dollars. Or you'd round it off in two digits to 36k. So your present value is so you're you're uh, getting quote 50,000 but actually it's only worth 36,000 to you today. Now assuming you can get a 10% rate of return. So this is this would be your last answer then is 36k. Well, I hope these problems were fairly straightforward and that you can see how you should have done them. Uh, hopefully most of you did them this way and again you just have to look at the cash flow a lot of times that's the best thing to do so like in this problem making the cash flow and I look at it I can immediately see oh yeah I've got this uh, annuity here and right here at the end I have an extra piece that's pretty clear to me once I draw it out when I draw this out oh I've got a piece right at the beginning plus an annuity I can see that right away so those two problems hopefully becomes much clearer if you draw a cash flow. I think you'll find that's true over and over and over again. They're just You just sum the pieces up. And of course, the first problem, we just had to find out what is the future uh, cost of the machine going to be and then find out how, what we can do for annual payments to make that cost given our investment envir environment. We'll continue on and, and look at more variations next week. Like I said, I, I hope this was clear and that you all did well on it. You take care, and I will see you later. Bye.